Hello again, Michael McCarthy with Harvard Executive Ed Strategic Sales Management and Eva Lauren, welcome. Thank we, you very much. And thank you for taking a few minutes of your time today to share with us uh, what is VUCA. So I will just let you begin and let us know what this is. And to give people a little bit of background, Eva is a PhD in Sweden. She has a background on the field in sales management for over a decade. She does online courses in VUCA, which actually came uh, out of the military. She will get into some of that background. And Eva, take it away. Thank you, Michael. I'm delighted to be here with you. And the topic is VUCA and sales management. So yes, I do have a PhD. Um, I'm not actually seeing my screen now, but if you are, it looks a bit like this. So my topic, an area of interest was how does sales contribute to business model innovation? And that's a bit of a, an oddball or a curveball because sales is not necessarily contributing to business model innovation or any innovation, but I'm saying it will have to in the future. So VUCA, let's look at sales and then we'll get to VUCA. What we're seeing now is that sales as a research topic, but also in business, is moving from a fairly pure and stringent focus on efficiency. So least effort, max output. That has shaped sales research for decades. And not to ignore or forget that we do need to run efficient companies and we do need to hit and excel in relation to our targets sales is taking a new form it's about growth the tree symbolizes growth business development and growing strategic long-term relationships so that's my comment on where we're at the state of a nation in, in terms of sales and selling so the next two pictures is about our context. The first is looking at sales, which is becoming increasingly complex. Homburg et al, European sales researchers, even 50 years ago, they were saying that sales is becoming a distributed function. So many people are selling in a company, be it B2B or B2C. You have a service after sales, you have a CEO who's selling and many other roles. In addition, you have omnichannel. So e-commerce, applications, partnerships that are totally online and not very interpersonal in terms of face-to-face. -face. So that growth of complex channels, sales and marketing, is definitely hitting us now full force, I find. The other picture is looking at our societal and market contexts. And here's where we really get into VUCA. So the World Economic Forum has put out a brief film, one minute, where they explain the world as a VUCA world. VUCA stands for, I'll repeat it later also, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Basically, it's chaos and it's happening very fast. Driving forces for VUCA are globalization and the increase of local presence and customer orientation, being both local and global. It's diversity. It's women entering the higher ranks of business, people with different ethnical backgrounds than ourselves. You have disruptors. You have disruptors in companies, eBay, Airbnb, commonly quoted. And you have people, still a lot of people who do business with each other. So those are some of the forces that drive VUCA. Of course, it is technology. VUCA is very related to technology development. 
But basically, what characterizes VUCA developments on a society and a market level is that one critical event in one process may have severe repercussions in other processes that you couldn't foresee. It's the unforeseen, which is quite challenging. So going to the next pictures, or set of pictures. I think we need to go up a bit because this lovely mess of a word actually reflect one of the jobs I had at Ericsson. I was the customization director for multimedia services and we worked with customizations that were not a desirable area for many in terms of standard product development, but very necessary in order to fulfill our customers and satisfy them. So I worked with different R&D places in the world and uh, it is very, very, your company or your logic is in upheaval when you start doing stuff that is out of the ordinary. However, the out of the ordinary stuff can also fuel and bring innovation. Conflicts, multiple perspectives. Yes, females in the workplace, female executives doing big business. That's also quite disruptive and has a VUCA flavor of its own. But let's look at VUCA's origin. Yes, you were saying the US, that's correct. In the 1990s, VUCA grew out of West Point in order to illustrate and teach strategic leadership with the emphasis of self-organizing teams and the importance to look at whatever task you're facing in the right context. Volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity. When I speak to the head of the Swedish Armed Forces, we look at one of the articles from Harvard Business Review and it's saying quite systematically and, and nicely, neatly, if you see that you have volatility in your environment, do this. Uncertainty, take this action, etc. And then uh, Carl, as his name is, he looks at me and I look at him and we smile and we say, yes, of course, but it's not VUCA unless all four conditions are there at the same time. And my argument is that they are increasingly present at the same time. I mentioned the technology drive as a force behind VUCA. And one of the key references you'll see down there, it's a Lieutenant Colonel out of West Point writing a report in 1998, where he describes our technical present day with uncanny precision. There are different other articles that are cited as a the VUCA origin. VUCA in itself doesn't need an origin. It's inherent in VUCA that you take challenges, information as is, and you go with the flow. You make something sensible, valuable, relevant, significant with that. So let's look at the next two slides. And we're going to do what my dad says. Uh, he said it all my life. Let's do one thing, one thing at a time, and then we'll go to the next one. Of course, I really hated him saying that all the time, but now I do. <laughs> Regularly to my students and always to my kids. Let's do one thing at a time. Let's look at volatility. You have an F1 race. They drive really, really fast really fast, 300 plus kilometers per hour. And that's all neat and nice. They're all trained for that task, but they all know that something might happen. And when it does, it happens in a split second with large consequences. So when this happens, a crash, you need to have trained rapid responses in order to 
to not you know be more hurt in that crash than you need to so you need to have really rapid responses but the actually unstable situation that's unknown you also train for that looking at uncertainty and this when i talk to executives from german companies they say we're good with volatility we're okay with complexity ambiguity is no problem we hate uncertainty that's fair enough many people do hate uncertainty so just a brief example if i say one two three logically michael what comes next wow. one two three yeah so vuka would be one two three eighty two sixty nine fifty seven and there is just no telling what comes next we don't like uncertainty what we need to do is as executives we need to balance structure leadership organization self drive in our teams and delegated mandate to run that's hard so that's v and u let's go to c are you a little bit up so we can see the lovely horse valoubet de roy are you do you go horseback riding michael at all i pet horses i don't ride them but i like horses i i, I talk to them <laughs> and i'm sure they talk to you gently back as well i grew up with horses so so this stallion is one of the most awarded prestigious stallions in the world the past 20 years his name is balobé de roy he's a french stallion with a ton of nerves the guy is rodrigo pessoa from brazil and brazil's brazilian companies and people are known for their ability to handle vuka balobé had this thing where he just flipped out on a regular basis also when competing so during these brief minutes, seconds and milliseconds, he would just flip out to jump, show jumping, competing is extremely complex. You have an animal that weighs 500 kilos and you have a number of fences. You need to take them in the right order and you need to fly over nothing should fall that is a really complex situation and a lot of feeling there is a lot of feeling and nerves in show jumping the business we're doing today it is very complex we have gone from a traditional product orientation or as vago lash calls it good dominant logic to a customer and a service orientation the complexity when we create solutions where parts are products, services, third party content, that is really complex. Let's go to the next one. Uh, Michael, just have a look at the picture for a little bit. Mm -hmm. What animal do you see? It looks like some kind of duck or dodo bird. You see the bird. Yes. Youth is about seeing multiple perspectives, having multiple perspectives and seeing multiple images. So if you tilt your head a bit, can you also see a rabbit? So you've got two ears. It's a bit, it's doing this. Oh yeah, a bunny with his mouth pointing yeah. down if I tilt yeah. to the left. So when I, when I show these pictures in huge crowds or small groups, at first, the first image people see is something. It's usually the bird. I'm not sure why. But then the, in every crowd, there are some people who see the rabbit as the first picture. The point is, when we have talked about both, everybody sees both pictures. So this is to illustrate that in ambiguity, you have multiple different perspectives. They're all valid. They're just different. 
At times you just have to agree to take a line and hold it. So yes, some people may be saying, but I prefer the rabbit to the duck. That's fine. We will be enriched by hearing the different perspectives and we should. It's the same with females and males in, in executive roles or in functions or at work. We need to hear both perspectives. We choose a line though and we hold it. So that was C, VUCA, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. So this session is coming to a close, but first, let me ask you, let's go to the next two, please, Michael. Let's, I'll just ask you, Michael, because you're there uh, face to face. When you work in VUCA, you work with fluffy and unclear targets, objectives, or a strategy that is not clear cut. Scant poor insufficient information and intel. You work with asymmetry. Some people know a lot of stuff and some people don't know anything. You don't have enough time. You have an unclear resource situation and, and definitely your resource budgeting is, is not there ever in full. You have little or no preparation for the task at hand. You have a mix of new team members, old team members, the ones you've chosen and some you haven't. You have disruptions, surprises, unclear mandates and fuzzy processes and tools that don't fit your purpose. So is this VUCA or business as usual, would you say, Michael? This happens all the time. I used to be a money manager. We, we lived in VUCA with the stock market every day. And oddly enough, I, I sail as a hobby. <laughs> Sailing's VUCA on the water. Uh, I think if you're not prepared for it, or at least expecting that that hurricane can show up any time, uh, you're going to have some trouble. Yeah. So I agree totally, Michael. VUCA is in our everyday life. You need to prepare for VUCA. You need to train for VUCA so that when you're out sailing, everybody's fine and nobody's ill. Or Then the storm hits you. Then you have prepared for that situation over and over again. And everybody knows exactly what to do. The rest you'll organize in real time. So training in VUCA conditions for VUCA conditions is really, really important. And it's the one, one of those online courses that I do. It's very, very individual to the group or the person because I, I basically make sure that you will be outside your comfort zone training on your VUCA skills. So I'm thinking that our audience, customers and students, they're sales managers. And in brief, and in sum, what does VUCA mean to you? Thank Sets. you, Eva. Sorry. I said thank you. This is wonderful. So, uh, Michael, why don't you read? Uh, you read what VUCA means to you. Uh, and, and I can fill in if there is a void. Because now I would enjoy hearing your voice instead of mine for a little bit. Well, I actually have a question for you. Uh, when you do VUCA for sales managers, what do the what do online programs look like when you when you basically customize VUCA for certain industries? If you were to customize it for sales managers in an online course, uh, mm -hmm. how does that look? Like, what do what do participants uh, expect or look forward to, or do they expect nothing because it's VUCA, so they have no idea? No, we will co-create the purpose. The purpose is really, really important. So. The customer and I, will, we will sit down and talk about what's the purpose of the VUCA training. Why do they want, want to do it at all? Is it to increase sales activity? Is it to increase sales? Is it because their business model is in transition where they're balancing a traditional business model with personal selling 
with omnichannel e-commerce and market automation. So are they in an internal VUCA that they need to be, make sense of and navigate? And what are their objective goals? Depending on what that goal is, say that it is uh, the ability, it can be a classic sales orientation. They want to increase the, the number of customer meetings and the number of closures and increase the order value. That is the framework. And then I put them in VUCA situations where they define in groups, in teams, exactly what type of scenario, what type of obstacles and what type of actions they need to do. But by focusing, and, and this is not, you know, that's not new, sales training, sales coaching. What is new is, if I can take back your analogy of sailing, let's assume that people in your boat are really, really good at sailing. When I do VUCA online workshops or face-to-face, -face, uh, which I prefer, I prefer the real-time thing. Uh, of course, it's wonderful meeting people. But we focus on training and handling circumstances, conditions, challenges that are not chosen, not predicted. So by looking at the context and training for that, you will also understand how you navigate your task in a better way, given what type of con conditions you're in. Uh, so it's the, the VUCA in the training is, is that, that we look at both task proficiency, but also contextual relevance analysis and gosh, they have to act and work hard, smart and in real time. That's very much a part of VUCA. Eva, thank you so much. It sounds like the online courses are fun, unpredictable and bit of a rocky road, but <laughs> they sound like a good time. We need to deal. Yes, yes. Well, thank you so much for your time and your insights. And thank you for sharing with us uh, about VUCA. It's always fun to learn something new. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, Michael. Bye-bye.